What is Eben Sense? Eben Sense is the largest online marketplace for service providers that offers services to customers, from housekeeping to simple carpentry. Or it could be that your car broke down and you want a mechanic. Or you could be the person who has the skill. Well, do not hold your back. Join AppInSense today. Join millions of other people that are using AppInSense to get things done. We are here to bridge the gap between a service provider and customer from the comfort of your fingertips. Join AppInSense today by simply going to www.appinsenseglobal.com or download the app both on Play Store for Android and App Store for your iOS to sign up today. Evan Sense, solution at your fingertips. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. Hinda, very many ladies and gentlemen, welcome to it. It's another episode of Podcast and Chill. I'm with the uh, very own Justin Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> is it safe to call you there? Uh, no, I think uh, Jay something is a little bit better. Yeah, anyway, man. We'll, we'll, Dude, we'll, we've been wanting to, uh, to do this for so long, man. Man, I was actually thinking a lot about this and, and thinking about there's one weird ass memory that I have, and you booked us for a gig. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it yeah. was some, I'm trying to remember whether it was in Mid Rand. <laughs> Or, or something, but I it was remember by these, near Cosmo City. Yeah, I, I had these like r- random little images <laughs> of that gig. But yeah, yeah, we've come a long way. Dude. You guys charged me twenty k, and you needed to perform at my gig first because <sighs> you had another gig. Twenty k the days <laughs> yeah. huh? where every promoter was making so much dollar, dude. I remember once in East London, we did a gig for a guy, yeah. and we were charging around there, and he's like, he came to us after the show, man, and he's like, "Yo, man, thank you, man. I'm gonna buy myself an Audi now, bro." <laughs> I'm like, yo, dude, I'm literally getting like 5K from this gig. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's speaking about an Audi. Oh, anyway, man. But do you remember how we first met? Remind me. Uh, I don't, in other words. Uh, um, you were so candy. I don't know what you were doing. Yes. Yeah. I was working. You were working then, before, then. Before me, because I was running uh, Soul Candy Studios. I was mm. managing the studios. I was cleaning up the studios for other artists. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, it was. As uh, in like literally cleaning? Like literally cleaning. Uh, Preparing their teas, making sure that the the monitors me. were in place on how they want. Yeah, I did. I did that for Brahu. I did it for Judas Supuma. I did it for TKZ. I did it for. Hold on, JR. let me turn my mic on. My mic just lifted up. There. This one, yeah, right? yeah, that one. Yeah, there, yeah. there you go. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did. I mean, I cleaned rooms for Jr. For you kidding? Everybody, J- bro. Jr. Jr. Actually, I just want to give a shout out to Jr. Because Jr. was actually one of the first people that actually made me believe in myself without him even knowing. Mm. I was cleaning the studios. They were rehearsing. I was in a, another studio jamming my guitar. And he came in and I was like, yo, who's that voice? And I, it was that moment of, of recognition of he was the guy that had the song. It was the, <laughs> the circle. No, circle. Oh, make the circle the bigger. Make the circle bigger, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and this guy came into, into the room to, to listen to my voice. And I, always, I never thought much about myself. You know, I wasn't as confident as I've become about my craft now yeah. uh, back then. So, so yeah, that's where, where it began. So that's where we met at Soul Candy offices. Yeah, so Soul Candy gives me a call. I think it's Ricardo. Uh, they're like, listen, they're trying to do this whole uh, online radio, radio chart show, show like Hot 99. Remember Hot exactly. 99? Yeah, Hot 99 vibe. So they wanted me to... Uh, to be the, the, the presenter, to right? present it. Yeah, I was doing the whole show. I was trying to put the whole show together. Yeah, and you were giving me directions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. Nah, these are these and are then, beautiful memories. And man. then Mposa walks in. Yes. He's like, "Do you know this guy?" I'm like, "I don't know who he is. I don't fucking care." You know? Yeah, yeah. Just some white guy who's an <laughs> yeah, engineer. Exactly. <laughs> Another white engineer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no, these guys. This Mikasa, he's he hooked up with Duda, and they got a big song coming up. I was like, okay, cool. You know how many times yeah, you hear yeah, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then two weeks later, these streets came out. Damn, Boom! Damn. I was like, shit. Sure. Maybe I should have given him some attention. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 man. You know, like I, I, yeah, it's been a crazy ride. But I think that when when I think of you, like I know that you've had a lot of problems with people. Yeah. Um, but I've never had a problem with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never. Yeah. No, it no, it no. wasn't even that thing of like, nah, you didn't. Nah, man. I, yeah. I've always enjoyed, even when you were doing, when your whole journey, I've enjoyed everything that you've done. Yeah. Um, 
And sometimes we need these moments mm. to birth new things. 100%. And that's what I was saying to you off air. I was like saying, dude, I'm really proud of you, man. Like I've been Thanks, sitting on your YouTube page and I've been watching the content and it's dope. Yeah. People need to check it out because it's the new age uh, entertainment. Yeah. YouTube is TV, bro. It is, bro. And, and people, the, the other day I had this epiphany. I was like, damn, you, YouTube is my DSTV. Mm. I'm sitting here flipping through whatever I feel like watching. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, your channel's great, bro. So Thanks, shout out bro. to you, man. Do you still have your channel? I still have my channel. Okay. It's okay. A, a lot of hard work. I'm spending a lot of money. I'm trying to make it... Um, a, a thing last month was the first time we made a bit of profit oh okay uh nothing to write home about but it was enough for us to get sushi for lunch that day so <laughs> I mean, like, it's, that's a big thing bro. nothing wrong with sushi bro <laughs> how much was your first paycheck from youtube mine was eight grand damn i don't even know what my first paycheck was from a mikasa point of view because we've had some videos that have done well I, mm. I, it's so small if you got eight grand imagine if we got eight grand you split it by three and you're playing a percentage <laughs> to management so like <laughs> shout out to you for for being independent you know but but it's, that's the thing about being in a band it's the hardest thing about being in a band is feeling that you need to share everything even yeah. though sometimes you feel like you're doing more than the guys yeah um this is an old this is an old story for a band it's yeah. it's a common thing uh, but yeah, YouTube is not our main stream of income. <laughs> but what happens? That's actually, you raise a good point there. Uh, what happens with the videos? Like if your video as Mikasa has like, let's say, 100 million views, mm. the money goes to you or does it go to your label? Well, it all depends on what master it is. So, I mean, we've got four, four, we've got four albums out. Excuse me. We've got four albums. We've, done, we've technically done five. There was a platinum edition one. Um, the first two albums are owned by Soul Candy, okay. master-wise. Um, and then the, the, the everything thereafter is, is owned by Mikasa. Oh, okay. And, and it just depends on that. So, and it's not, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. You know, this whole talk about like, you, you should own your masters. Like if you can get your masters back, that's great. Mm -hmm. Um, but we had to kind of sacrifice a little bit of that, um, to, to be able to start up our thing. Cause we had nothing. Yes. Um, we started from the bottom. Yeah. I guess that's a whole nother discussion, but mm. how it works is, is it would be split by, by four essentially. Um, and it's the way that we even set up our new business is, is we always split everything by four so that there's a portion for each one of us and there's a portion for the business. Mm. So wherever we make money, even off a gig, we cut everything by four. Mm. It's uh, income for, for the guys. And then it's, it's that thing of like not being stupid of not investing back into your business. Yes. That's a really important thing. And, I've, and when I, I could have so much more money in the bank if I just kind of just carried on doing what I was doing that was making money. But what I did is I've been investing into other things. So Mikasa is an entity. That's the fourth. That's it. There's a fourth member. We've always <laughs> spoken about this damn fourth member. It's like, you know, we still have to pay the tax guy. And then there's still this fourth <laughs> member there, which becomes even harder. But, but it's helped us a lot in doing cool things. We've gone on tours because of that money. We've tried uh, opening up doors with that money. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good mentality. Cool, man. We'll talk about that later yeah. on. If you're wondering why I'm having coffee, this nigga's the first nigga to make me have coffee on the show. Uh, not just any coffee. I mean, it's a <laughs> cappuccino from a... Hey, you know, my nigga. <laughs> uh, it's because we're coming at you Willis, live. Man. Yeah, yes, yeah. Is... <laughs> we're coming at you live from Jay Something's house. Um, now I know how the 1% lives. <laughs> This house uh, is dope, man. You know, it's it's weird, man. Like it's uh, even if I am the one percent, I, I I feel like I I worked, I've worked so mm. flipping hard, bro. Mm. I've sacrificed so much of my life to to be able to be where I am today. And and sometimes I wonder how much more should I push? Um, because I think like things come into perspective when new things come into your life that mean more than Kids. the old things. Mm. And, and I've always wanted to be famous, world famous, because I wanted to influence. I didn't want to be famous for like the fame's sake. I don't yeah. care about fame, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I honestly don't. Uh, I, I appreciate being loved. And that's the most beautiful thing about this whole thing. But, mm. but yeah, I mean, you know, I, I look at this house every day and I'm like, Dude. wow, man. I like, I, this is because of a song. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. So I feel, I feel really thankful for that. Uh, let's take it back, man. Why did you guys leave Portugal when, when, when you were seven? Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. So we're going that far back. So, <laughs> so I was born in the south of Portugal in a small town called Portimão, uh, in the, in the south where all the beautiful beaches are. Is that far from where Ronaldo was born? So Ronaldo, Ronaldo was born in Madeira on an island. Uh, so it's a bit far, but it's still the same thing. There's this huge, well, we're not even going to talk about that. <laughs> uh, my father works, uh, worked in the <laughs> hospitality industry, yeah. uh, running hotels and, and starting hotels up for, for different hotel groups. Uh, he was, he specialized in food and beverage. Um, 
and uh, and our family we grew up in hotels my fa- my father my mother opened up the sun city um the dome yeah she opened up that she did the she did the, the pr catering. yeah they they she threw the who's the guy that owns or used to own sun international uh, i know the that guy, guy man. that hey, rich guy yeah, yeah, yeah the rich guy, guy. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. did like she my my father opened up uh, cascades the hotel before oh, i was wow. born and my brother lived there my, i've got a 10 year uh, a brother that's 10 years older than me um so so they used to live here my father's family uh, originates from mozambique okay um his mother um and they went back to Portugal, and then and then we moved back to South Africa when I was seven. So my mother was pregnant with me in Venda. They were living. My, my father. You're I, I swear. I swear. No wonder we get along. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> It's you know it's it's a weird thing, bro. Because I did I've done a couple of gigs in Venda, and every time I go back there, it feels somewhat spiritual. And yeah, I don't want to get carried away, but yeah. it does. It feels really good. No way, uh, I yeah. swear, dude. My my father was running Venda Sun. Uh, for Sun International Yeah and it's still there It's still there And I had the weirdest moment of my life When we went there I walked into the hotel Because that's where they had our holding room And this old Magogo came up to me And she says Yo Are, are you Carlos' son? And I was I freaked out You know Because my dad Then had already passed away yeah. And I was like Yes And she's like I worked with your pops wow. And I'm like Wow So anyway We, we moved back to South Africa So okay. my mother wanted me To be born in Portugal mm. With the family and everything So um, moved to Portugal and then moved back when I was seven. My mm. father got a job opportunity in the Eastern Cape, mm. and that's where I grew up. I yeah. grew up in the in the staff village of the hotel. Um, started to learn a rugby ball and Tosa and just the culture, you know, yeah. like just taking in. I was this sponge, you know, mm. and I was freaked out by a lot of things. Like I'd never seen. I, I don't recall seeing a black person. Yeah. So when I arrived, there were these two kids and they were like, they were tanned, yo. I'm like, yo, these oaks have been chilling in the sun for long. And then, I, and then they become my best mates. Their names were, <laughs> their names were Mbasa and Mpiwe. Yeah. And they, they started to teach me everything about things. I mean, in a kid way, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and I guess that's, I pay a lot of tribute to that because I think that's where I really started to become an And at that time, those being. kids, we didn't know color at that time. You Bro, know? I didn't understand it. It's, it's post about And I mean that in the most sincere way. Like I really thought, because in Portugal, people go and sit on the beach and they tan. And the more you tan, the darker you get. So when I arrived, I was like, wow, these people are like serious about tanning. But it's the innocence of a child, you know. And yeah. I think like one of the secrets to life and to success for me is innocence. Mm. It's for you to just start a damn podcast. And yeah. next thing you know, you're making I met Jay something else. Oh, well, <laughs> it's going to be higher things than this. But yeah. So yeah, I moved here when I was seven and then grew up in the Eastern Cape. Um, what school did you go to? I went to a small little farm school called Shaw Park Primary School. There was three of us in grade seven. Me and two girls. You kidding? Yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 the the girl that the one girl, her name was Nicole. She used to open up the bowling for our under thirteen <laughs> team because we didn't have enough players. But we used to whoop ass, bro. <laughs> like people were like, "Oh, damn!" There's a girl opening up the bowling, and she used to steam in them, and it was great. Oh. Uh, so I grew up that side, and then and then I went to Gramstown for high school. Yeah, I went to Graham College, and and that's where I really started to kind of. I went to boarding school. Started to really understand of of individuality and mm. being on my own. And did you get picked hustle. on because like you know people thought you were trying to be black? You no, know? man. It, you know, it's so weird, dude. I, I for the first time uh, on my birthday a couple of days ago, I was at Saint. <laughs> I don't even understand, and I, I I've never ever thought to myself, and this is a very personal thing. I've never thought. I'm trying to be black. Mm, Never. Mm, mm. And, and, and the friends that I have around me are so comfortable with who that I am. They don't make you feel like that. I've never felt out of that. Even when I started to, this Mikasa thing, mm, I started to get mm. a lot of it, but it was, a, it was very lighthearted. Yeah, it was like, yeah. yo, dude, you, you're a black dude trapped inside a white man's skin. And I, I was like, no, I'm, I'm actually just the dude. And I, and I don't know, like I love dancing. And if that makes me like black, I don't understand. But anyway, but this girl came up to me and she, we were talking in a group of guys, and this girl was there, mm-hmm. and I said, Aish, man, like, how I talk, yeah. like, this is how I talk, I don't know, I, I said, Aish, son, and she was like, ah, please don't do that, please don't come and try and be black, and I'm like, what? what, you don't know me, yeah. like, this is how I am when I'm with my wife, who are you to tell me, anyway, so that really impacted me, I came home, and I was like, am I trying to be black, mm. for the first time, dude, like, doing Mikasa for nine years, mm. I had this moment, but, but I never got picked on. Yeah. I, 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 that, you must understand, I came here seven, 
I didn't know how to speak a word of English, nothing. Oh, okay. And I learned Iskosa, Afrikaans, and English at the same time. I was being told about Lobola and Malva pudding at the same time. Like, it was the same. Like, it was one thing. So I took everything in. It wasn't like a... I, I, and then when I, when I started high school, I had a colored... Be, he's still my best friend today. His name is Brent. And, and we grew up together. So I would always be in the colored area. Yeah. So I learned that culture. It was that... That was my vibe. And yeah. that's still my vibe today. It's a whole mixed thing. I'm married to a Tswana woman. Mm. I never wanted to be married to a black woman. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to ma be married to a woman that I, I dig. Love. Yeah. Dude, and I, like, and I found that in a girl that was not... That was a slightly more tan than me. Yeah. That's all. That's... I think people, society especially, like to box people. Ah, and sometimes dude. you're just being you, bro. Yeah, man, I know. Man. I, I, hate those, I hate those boxes of things. It just frustrates me so much. But... But you know what? I think like because like I was I was I was saying on my podcast the other mm. week like uh, even me my best friend was Jewish dude yeah, yeah I went yeah. to his bar mitzvah you know yes. what I mean like I didn't know color until I started working in corporate mm. then I was like oh shit there's racism yeah, oh yeah, yeah, shit yeah. like I had Indian friends sure colored friends you know what I'm saying yeah I, I, again I think it's that like that innocence and mm. then I, and then I think also like what I've what I've always been aware of is that innocence is important but then also having an understanding of what the the what's really happening yeah reality is also important okay um so it's like it's also understanding that there is a lot of racism going around Got you. um and, and and i think with everything that's going on at the moment in the country like i've never ever thought i'm gonna leave mm. and i'm a guy that has a european passport mm. my whole family can leave mm. but i've always thought that i'm part of the solution mm. because I've, i'm here for a reason mm. and i think that that comes with the realization of what the current affairs are mm. and the fact that yeah dude like you not racist or you i i i low-key think that we all racist yeah. in, in a form like yeah. that we all have that because that's how we were brought up yeah. i don't mean it in a drastic sense but we all have like even some, tribal tribalism it, this uh, sexism all mm. these things we have an element of it because it's passed down to you the other day somebody said to me like how unique are you because we're all trying to be unique right we all think that we're unique but they said to, are, are you not just the culmination of a whole bunch of experiences that other people have given you mm. and that made sense to me because like i'm this way because of that person and you're actually not that unique you're just like a string that is never ending and you just jump on people jump on you and make you who you are you yeah. know you aren't like a, a creative idea like you think it's creative and then you go google and you're like okay i'm not that creative uh do you still like your mom's prawns Still love my mom's prawns, my mom's food. It's it's a really uh, emotional thing. I dig it. It's, it's, it's can you make my sonja since you're from Venice? My sonja can't talk, but I, <laughs> but I, I guess I can. You know, like <laughs> that's the thing about this food thing, dude. It's like it's really weird how like people come up to me and be like, "Yo, can you do this?" And I'm like, "Sure, I'll just Google it. <laughs> I'll just like, I'll just go and find the recipe, bro. Like I'm not like a yeah. Anyway. You still you still your mom's clothes, bro." <laughs> Where did you hear about that? <laughs> so when I was when I was in, in junior school, I had this like not not even a low key. It was like a mad <laughs> obsession with uh, Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, and um, and and I was I was like literally like I'd try and practice the moonwalk, and I'd even practice grabbing my crotch, you know, because that's what he did. I was like, Whoa! <laughs> you know, that's kind of the vibe. And, and and I went to school one day, and I took my mom's like she had these like white gloves and you know michael jackson yeah. had the white gloves and the tight vest the whole vibe and, and i went and i remember the principal call, called my mother that day and she's like yo your son's really got to stop listening to michael jackson because it's getting out of hand he's just grabbing his crotch everywhere <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah uh still 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 a huge fan yeah. uh not not wearing not stealing mom's clothes anymore though yeah and what did you think as because i know you love michael jackson dude. Yeah. what did you think of when these accusations and allegations came out Sure. As a, a musician as well. It's a tricky one. It's a tricky one because I guess a lot of people have compared it to like the R. Kelly thing. Mm -hmm. And and the the R. Kelly thing was really hard to swallow because yeah. I really digged his music. Yeah. And and I had to make a decision based on the experiences that I've had around R. Kelly because we opened up for him and that oh, is and it? like I don't want to talk too much about that, but the glimpse that I got around that night it kind of made sense to me around what was going on. Everything clicked. It, it was Join weird. It was weird. It was lank weird. I'd never seen that at a show before. Um, and, then, and then came this, like, this whole thing of, of Michael since he's been dead. Uh, there's always been that thing around him. Um, but one of the things that I've always struggled with, and, and it's, it's a, it's, I really hope I don't get into trouble for saying this, but like, for me with Michael, I really feel that even if he's done a lot of bad things, I really feel that a lot of that 
I tribute to his upbringing. Yeah. Like, I really feel like this, this dude had an unfair upbringing. And mm-hmm. it goes back to leadership mm-hmm. as a parent. Mm-hmm. Um, I really feel like what he was put through as a kid was unfair. And I mean, I don't know how much you know about Michael, but I mean, I read a book written by his brother. And the father was really heavy on Michael mm. um, to the point where he, he felt like he didn't have a childhood. And mm. I think when he grew up, not that that by any means it gives justifies, you, justifies for yes. you to go and do anything that we don't even know if it's true or not. Yeah. Right. Because there's been both sides of the story. I refuse to watch the documentary or the thing that's on, on about Michael. Yeah. Number one, because he's dead and he can't back himself up. Yeah. Number two, I'm a serious fan. Mm. Number three, when I listen to his music. It's very different to an R. Kelly. Yeah. There's nothing there about I'm going to take you to the after party and the strip clubs and whatever, popping mm-hmm. bottles. Like this oak was trying to use music to heal the world, in yeah, my opinion. Yeah. He, and that's, where I t- that's why I loved him. I didn't love Michael as the, the, the celebrity. Mm. I don't actually know much about him in that sense. I know his music. And his music for me, why I liked it so much is here was a dude that was a king of pop that was writing the biggest hits in the world. And they were all about pure things. Wow. They were about happiness, about love, about changing the world. strip it down. Bro, like, and that's the thing. Like, now when you look at the world now, music is very different. Mm. You have to write about the things that the kids want to hear. And unfortunately, <laughs> bro, like, and it breaks my heart, you know, like, <laughs> breaks my heart because music is such a powerful tool mm, to change mm, people. Mm, mm. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I feel, I feel like with this whole Michael thing, like, it, it really does make me sad because I really don't want it to be true. Mm. And then also, I'm also playing the card of like, I don't want it. I don't want to look. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. Gotcha. Um, Speaking about music, how did you meet the guys? Because Dr. Duda had been in the game for a long time. He yeah, did change the world. Yeah, no, dude, I mean, Duda did, I mean, Duda, Duda did so many hit tracks for Mbuso, for Fresh, yeah. um, and then changed the world. I mean, you know, you, you should have a sit down with him. Because, yeah. I mean, he's a, his story is also phenomenal. Yeah. Um, met them uh, random nights. I was working at the studios. Uh, Soul Candy was throwing a party at the roof of the Radisson Hotel. Uh, my cousin, who moved me to Joburg, okay. his name is Sergio. Um, shout out to Sergio because he, he, li- he literally birthed my whole career, in my opinion. Um, they were throwing a party and he was having his, um, how do you say, like when you, your fiance and your engagement party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Engagement party at the party. Okay. So he's like, yo, come, I'm having my engagement party. Yeah. And so I went to his, he was like in a little corner of this uh, La Dolce Vita was the series parties and, and Harrell and all the guys were there the Soul Candy guys the DJs and, and, and there was this DJ playing and I heard the, the grooves and I, I was like I still am, I still regard myself like a, a little bit of like an introvert or a, shy, a shyer guy yeah, than yeah. normal um, but for some reason I went up to Duda and I was like yo can I can I sing over these beats? Wow. He didn't know me. Yeah. Um, and, and I remember that look in his face, man, because Duda's also like, Duda's a nice guy. Yeah. He's not a no. He's, yeah, not, yeah. A, he's not that. He's like, he, so he's like, uh, sure. Sure. You know? And then and the next thing I knew, I was singing whatever was coming to mind, whether it was a Sade or Bob Marley or just a, a melody that I heard. And then this trumpet guy rocked up. And it was literally like that. Because his brother, kidding. Mo's brother, Chaps, was doing the promotions of the party. He was doing the street posters and whatever. So he was there. Mm. So he called his brother and he's like, yo, come and play trumpet. There's a cool vibe here. Then I started sharing my mic with Mo. So I would sing (laughs) and then sing again, you know? Um, And that's how Mikasa was birthed. After that, everybody was like, we need your album. Can we take pictures? And I, I just remember being lang freaked out, excited all at the same time, wow. not understanding what was going on. I was fresh out of varsity. I was trying to look for a job, man. I just wanted a marketing gig. Yeah. That's all. Um, and then it took about three months for me to, to beg Duda to, to just allow me to record a song, yeah. uh, to write a song over a beat and, and whatever it was. I didn't understand the house world. I wanted to be a John Mayer. You know, like that's it's really been my, my, my dream my whole life is just to be on my guitar and sing. Um, and then Mikasa started. We recorded These Streets. That was the first song. <laughs> That's the first damn song, bro. <laughs> it's insane, dude. And you know, like, I know it sounds lang cheesy, but I really believe that Mikasa was destined to be a thing. God works in mysterious ways, you, man. Like, I, I really, I struggle to believe that a lot of times in other things. Um, but for certain things, like, it just makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's, it's like, it was part of the... It was in the writing, you know? So if you didn't go to that party, we wouldn't have these streets, your sure, body. Sure, Like if you didn't get fired, you wouldn't be here. That's a good thing. That's 
no, I like that. But I it's like... true, bro. Like, <laughs> and that's 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 for me. After I'm done with this interview, is going to be the main point in my head for mm. the rest of the day. Is that certain things are meant to happen? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and 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 we might not like them in those in those moments of time, um, but they need to happen. Yeah. Mikasa needed to want to break up to be where it is now. Hmm. We needed to do that hmm. um, because every love relationship needs to go through yeah. a pit yeah. in order to see the sun. Like mm-hmm. you need to. Yeah. So that will be my main taking. I don't care what we talk about more here, but that will be the thing that I'm reminded of again. How do you feel about killing Liquid Deep's career? <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy, man. Yeah. So Zion, Zion, <laughs> Zion's a really good friend of mine. Now I, I'm going to say he's a good friend. Um, he, he, I'm going to say that he's a is a guy that I'm trying to spend a lot more time with to become a friend. Yeah. Um, because I think that when you come across this industry, there's not a lot of people that I look at and think I want to be mates with them. Yeah. Not that there's Genuinely. anything wrong. It's yeah. just a, a click. Yeah. It's just a click. Like yeah. a vibe. Uh, a I'm vibe. an ordinary guy, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. And and sometimes I feel. Like I'm, I'm amongst extraordinary people. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but uh, you know, it's just so weird. When we started, man, I didn't understand the comparison because they were a DJ with a singer and we were a DJ playing keys with a trumpeter and a singer. And yes, we were both doing house music, but it was drastically different in my opinion. Mm. You know, some people say that we, 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 we sound the same. Mm. Our music, Mikasa, not mm. Mikasa and Liquid Deep. Mikasa mm. sounds the same, and I'm like, like you got a sound. Yes, mm. uh, and also they mean. I, I know that some people mean it in a bad way, mm. and I'm like, I, I, I think to myself, if you think that these streets sounds the same as Jiga, mm. you you have a serious mm. ear problem mm. because mm. They, they're drastically different. Yeah. Stevie Wonder sounds the same on every track. Mm. But every track sounds different. But yeah. it's Stevie Wonder. Yeah. And and people always ask us like, "No, oh, you're going to change your sound." I'm like, "No, man, we're not going to change the sound. It's going to stay like that." But but Liquid Deep, when we started, Liquid Deep, it's funny because they were a huge source of inspiration for me. Okay, I, I dig them. I Fairy love Liquid tale. Deep. Yeah. I think Zion, and I've I've mentioned this online before. I think he's one of the most talented musicians in this country right now. Mm. People don't know that about him um, because he's not doing mainstream now. Yeah. But he's talented. Yeah. He's he's really really talented um so when we started it was weird because we would do gigs together and we would be hanging out oh, and everybody else thinks we beefing or we're like <laughs> so i never felt that i they went through their own issues yeah. that had nothing to do with mikasa mikasa brought a bit of competition to that scene competition is, is good it's good yeah and and then i think again like zion wouldn't be where he is now if, if you didn't go through, through that the so journey. Sometimes, like, you have to look at... I, I, I try and look at things like that all Fuck, the time. What would have been dope is a Liquid Deep Mikasa collab. Oh, that So I've written a song dope. with Zion. Oh. Um, a, a beautiful song that we've never released. It's there. Uh, and we'll see what happens with it. But I think that dream... Because a lot of people, when, 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 when I mentioned that we were together in the studio, it really got a lot of attention. Because oh. I think a lot of people that are fans of our music yeah. have been wanting to see and the genre it. And it will general. happen. Yeah. It's yeah. already done. It's yeah. just a matter of release. How was it performing for Barack Obama, bro? It was random. It was really <laughs> scary. It was random. Um, we, 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 yeah, I, I remember Tsepi, our booking agent at the time, she got a call and she thought it was an absolute joke. She thought it was a prank because they said no. Did you charge them 20K? We didn't charge. Oh, wow. No, dude, how do you charge Barack Obama? <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, you want us to come to DC? Sure. <laughs> Just uh, hook up our flights. We literally got paid flights and accommodation. Okay. Um, we weren't trying to do anything more than that. Um, arrived there and um, and they announced us. We were backstage ready to go on stage. They announced us and nobody said anything. Mm-hmm. It was dead quiet. And that was that was a really scary moment for me because it like you had to depend fully on the power of music. And the experience. Exactly. And and you know, like it's sometimes you get into a comfort zone of they know my songs, they know my vibe, they dig me, they, you know, if they're here, they dig me. So, boom, it's easy game. Now, so there, and then the, the, the and then there, there was also the band from South Africa. And the first guy to come out was me, this white dude. <laughs> you know, like, and, and, I, and, and I, I'm sure that none of them even thought this, but in my mind, I was thinking like, shucks, man, maybe I should have worn like a African <laughs> attire or something, you know, but, but we did it and we rocked the show, dude. It was yeah. amazing, it was phenomenal, it was, uh, it was a pivotal moment in our career because it was something that a lot of people spoke about. Mm. Um, We're speaking about it now. We're speaking still. about yeah. it now still. It's still something that we brag about. It's brag worthy. Yeah. Um, Did you get to meet really him? Cool. No, not oh. at all. Oh. Not at all. I mean, I, I remember the whole experience was, we were, sur- the, I don't know if you've been to the States, but the, no, no, the no. blocks 
are massive. Okay. Like when you speak about blocks, they're huge. Yeah. So we there was like four blocks blocked off by army trucks and all oh. this. Line. And when we would perform, we had to go straight off stage, uh, back into your room, and then you'd go. I remember we went into like this media area where we did interviews, and then back. So we never got to mingle yeah. or anything. It was really high security type thing. Have you, who else have you met that's famous like Vi Music? Um, well, I've, I've, I've managed to rub shoulders with a lot of people that I admire a lot. Mm. I mean, when, when you ask me that question, straight to uh, what comes to mind is people like uh, Brahu Masike, okay, yeah, uh, Lady Smith Black Mambazo, mm. uh, legends. Uh, these are these, and these are people that I've not just met with, I've worked with mm. uh, Ray Piri, mm. um, wow. uh, uh, Bravus uh, who I recently worked with, uh, Jonathan Butler. Um, who I'm currently writing for. It's it's just incredible. Like my two thousand Google this shit. <laughs> yeah, wait, when you speak to me about this, like I, I I could tell you that yeah, I met I met Drake and I'm do like those those are cool. You met Drake? Yeah, we opened up for him when he came here. Wow. Uh, so we got to meet him. You know, we did. We've uh, uh, we've we've opened up for a whole bunch of cool people. Yeah. But for me, like when you when you when you talk to me about legends that I've met that I've through music, I think about. The people close to home that really mean a lot to me. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, um, Oliver Mduguzi, Oof. his second last show on this earth was in my restaurant. Wow. A and he, it was an open mic, dude. dude. And he was like, no, nah, I want to go on stage. And he wasn't well. Yeah. And I'm like, you want to go on my open mic stage? Like, it's crazy. So these are the people that I think of. I've also had the privilege of meeting new, new school legends for me, like people like... Uh, um, Nasty C. Wow. I feel I feel it's an honor to have rubbed shoulders with Nasty C. For real? He's one of my favorite musicians in this country. I think he's phenomenally talented. I've, I've managed to rub shoulders with uh, Black Coffee. Black Coffee is a. I regard him as a good friend. I regard him as a as a brother figure, somebody that we can that we can lean on. Um, so these are the type of people that I think I I one day I want to be able to tell my kids like, Yo, man. I, I was there with them. And I know I'm missing a lot of people because I've had the privilege. I've been in studio with WizKid, with W. I've, I've met these. Dibanj is a good friend. It's These people are, I regard as like my legends. Mm. The, the people that I want to tell my kids. Kirk Whalem. I don't know if you're on Kirk Whalem. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. The, my 2000s must really Google this. <laughs> I'm on, Mikasa's on Kirk Whalem's upcoming album. He's one of the biggest jazz names in the world. He's wow. one of the best saxophonists in the world. So these are the type of people that I've had the opportunity of meeting and calling friends. And have you ever met someone that was famous that you idolized, but then ended up being a dick? The most dramatic moment of, well, one of the most dramatic moments of my career was opening up for John Legend. Okay. Uh, growing up. Uh, idolize the man. Yeah. Growing up, I, I, you know when you idolize to the point that you're actually trying to sound like him. <laughs> so you would, you would change from, it is ordinary people <laughs> to like we're just ordinary people we the need the way to grow yeah you know you try and do that because you idolize the dude so much so here we are opening up for him at Santon Convention Center Mikasa's at at a very interesting moment of its career these streets is fire at the moment it was record of the year we were like we, we had all the attention and we came out we were opening up for him we had a we had a 30 minute slot we did two songs Mini Lamini came on. Thank you very much for Mikasa. Switched off all our sound. And we were told to get off stage. And I was so gutted because I didn't understand. And then every, what made it worse is that Mini was trying to say that John Legend is coming up next. But everybody was still shouting Mikasa. We want more. We want more. That time, it's John Legend's show. No? What happened? You know, and, and then again, it's, you heard it through the grapevine. And, and what happened was apparently he, his management didn't enjoy that we were putting the stage on fire like we oh, were so they cut us off yes. so that he could have the attention when he finished his show people were asking for Mikasa <laughs> like it was insane um, so that that really bothered me <laughs> wow. because and, and ever since then I mean I still dig the dude's music and I still think if I ever got to meet him I'd, I'd want to tell him about that story because I need to get off my shoulders yeah. if I ever had the opportunity to, to link with him um, but but because he should have been family. embracing you guys. You know what, dude? You know what? What grows me about this whole opening up for things of, for artists? It's mm. not the the other stuff. Yes, it irritates me. The stuff that irritates people like AK and that's those mm. sort of people irritates mm. me too. But the whole thing about opening up for people is that I feel like they don't care. Mm. They don't really care who's opening up for them. Mm. When we do shows as Mikasa and we choose our, our lineup, you for, care. For, Bro, we go and, I go and chill with them. I go and watch their show. Mm. Uh, and I'm not saying that Drake needs to come and watch my show, but I'm like at least there's that thing of like, yo, thanks for opening up for me yeah. and, and welcome 
to South Africa. We yeah. from here, you like know? a cosign, you know. It's just that thing, and and I, I've only had that from the from the legends, and that's mm. why I say to you when I meet well, Lady Smith, Black Mambazo, the whole crew made us feel like superstars. Wow. And I'm like, yo, we're chilling with Grammy, multiple Grammy award winners, yeah. and they were like, wow, we cast us here. I'm like, nah, guys, <laughs> no, <laughs> this is not fair. <laughs> Uh, what's the strangest thing that's happened at your shows, man? Any thongs on stage? The strangest thing that I can think of. Yeah, we've had all that stuff being thrown on stage. But hey, the strangest, you know. the strangest, the strangest thing that I can think of was one day in 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 a very uh, deep deep village somewhere. I can't remember <laughs> where it was. I just remember getting off stage, and this this girl was inside our car that we had rented for this gig, and she was going through my bag and I, just, I was like what is she doing and um and next thing she walked out i like bro i kid you not she walked out with my socks <laughs> and she's running out of the car and she's like i've got chase socks <laughs> and i'm like what is and then the bouncers are chasing and i'm like no it's just socks like it's okay dude and then they grabbed and they brought me back the socks and i'm like no <laughs> This is just weird. She could have kept the socks, but like, uh, that, so that was a really weird moment. Yeah, but we've had some, we've had some weird things. We once thought we were being followed by, by like kidnappers, and then they turned out to be just fans. You know, they followed us all the way to our guest house. It was crazy. We were scared, dude. We were like turning turns, <laughs> and then it's just some ladies. I'm like, oh man, oh gosh, <laughs> uh, the ship is sinking. You can only save one. Moti or Duda. Hey, you gonna hey, save? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and none of them can swim well so i'm like thinking about um yeah i don't know which one of you guys swim better because i'll, I'll try and swim the guy that that can't swim as well um which i think i think it's mo huh? i think i'd have to save mo because i think duda would be able to get out on his own <laughs> oh gosh do you guys ever fight though man we fight low key. Yeah. We, we fight without talking. Mm. It's a it's a very bad problem. It's a poison. Yeah. It's a poison that we're still trying to deal with. We we've gotten a bit better at it, but the then it becomes bigger than the problem becomes bigger than it was. Duda's old school. Yeah, Duda's an old school guy that that uh, grew up with with very old school principles, and and Duda is not a guy that would confront somebody. Yeah, he's a guy that would be like, oh, you said that. Okay, shut shut. Yeah. And you can't do that with Mikasa mm. because we together every day. Mm. So we've had some altercations, but I think that uh, we've we've always spoken about it in a in a respectful manner. Never ever have we had ah screw you, man. Yeah, never, yeah. never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we've yeah. had we've had our fish, and the yeah. longer you work together, the longer you know. Okay, this is how Duda is. Exactly. This is how Jay when, is. When people ask me about a band, I just say, "Have you ever been in love before? Yeah. Have you ever been in a relationship? <laughs> That's what it's like." Uh, what do you think about my piano, bro? Ah, um, it's an interesting one. Um, I, I, I love what it's done for, for house music. I'm a little bit confused at the moment, hence why the, the little bit of hesitation with the answer. I'm a little bit confused around what exactly my piano is now. Yeah. I feel like it's evolving. I, th I feel like music is going, house music is going through a really uh, fast cycle mm -hmm. uh, where, where house was where we were. Yeah what we were doing it was in that soulful tip it was that uh, vocal yeah it was the vocal it was the thing and then it moved into this gom phase which yeah. i really didn't like yeah um, because i, I, I and, and and i didn't like it it's personal yeah there's a lot of people that don't like my music and, yeah and i always say that's okay dude. yeah you can't expect everybody yeah. to like my music yeah. so you're I not michael jackson yeah, exactly exactly <laughs> exactly and even he didn't have even he had hate, so yeah. um when the whole gom thing came out i just thought like it wasn't very musical mm. and i've always been for musicality around yeah. around things uh, yeah. i'm a songwriter i yeah. i'm a musician i, I love that but you then want I emotion start, and then i started to realize that gom was touching a lot of people and and that's a talent on its own that mm. you are able to create a simple melodic song that clicks with people that's a talent on its own but i knew that gom wouldn't go far because to the ear it's repetitive. Yeah. So when you hear something repetitive, people get bored of it. Mm. No matter how much of a trend it is, it will pass. Yeah. It's a trend. And that's the difference between uh, classic songs and Exactly. Well, a timeless song. track. Timeless, yeah. A timeless track is it's a different... It's not a summer track. Yeah. So everybody's always after the summer anthem. Mikasa's always after a timeless song. Okay. That's what we after. We want, like, we want to have a song that will be relevant every summer. Yeah. Not just for the summer. Ooh. Yeah, it's different. It's a, di it's a different mind frame. Mm -hmm. So then my piano thing started. And I really dug my piano when it started because it was slow. Mm -hmm. So as a singer, I, dig I digged it a lot more because it had more space. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if you're doing a song at 124... 
you don't have a lot of space the, to sing. Yeah, the room is... You know? And when it's all of a sudden it's one fifteen, you all of a sudden have all the space. Even the track expands exactly. from four minutes becomes six. Exactly. So you have more space. I dig that. But nowadays, I mean, I got sent a track by, by Oskido who, wanted me to, who wants me to jump on a track and I'm going to do it. And he's like, I don't know if you like it because it's my piano. And I'm like, dude, this sounds exactly like mid-tempo <laughs> Glenn Lewis days. <laughs> like, this sounds like those... So it's weird. And then the other day I was on Live Amp and they were playing... Some tr- I, I think it might have been Moonchild even. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't think it was Moonchild. It was somebody else. But I'm like, this is quiet though. Mm. Like, why is this my piano? I don't mm. understand. So I think it's gotten a little bit of, out, out of hand. And, and I think what it's doing, it's evolving yeah. to come back to the South African iconic house music that we all love. Yeah. Which includes the 115s yeah. and the 120s yeah. and the 125s. Yeah. I mean, if you listen to Kabza and Maporisa, that's exactly what they're doing with yes. like what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. They've made it a lot more musical. Yeah. Which is what Maporisa so, always does to yeah. music. He just yeah. gives it a little bit of musicality. Uh, let's talk about your love life, man. How's the mm. missus, man? Amazing. Amazing. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to keep it brief. Yeah. Because, um, my my private life really is my private yeah, life, yeah. and and my wife is somebody that I I, I admire a lot. She I, I could never even tell you on air. I'm no, I'm no, I'm nowhere near ready mm. to tell anybody about mm. what we've been through. Mm. It's way beyond your wildest imaginations. Yeah. Uh, you you wouldn't even believe me if I had to tell you what we've been through in the last year. It's been the hardest year of my life. Wow. Uh, to the point of um, we thought that we might lose one another. Wow. physically wow. Uh, so so yeah That's crazy. Uh, it, it was it's been really hard but but she you know our, our love life is it's amazing dude mm. i'm so in love yeah. and i am not ashamed to say that one bit yeah. um i'm about my wife i'm about my family i'm about my my home and my things is it weird that when you're young you're always chasing different ladies you know yeah, yeah, yeah. and then when you get older you just want that one sure it's weird because when i started mikasa I remember the first show we ever did. Uh, it was in ta- it was in East London. It was a club called Talamanca, and and I was fresh out of varsity, and we just done the show, and and we had all this attention. And I remember all these girls jumping into our bus, wanting to go to the hotel. <laughs> and I was like, "What? It's just my first gig ever, <laughs> right?" So I'm like, and at varsity, I wasn't the guy that would go for the for the ladies. Like yeah. I was I was shy, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, these girls in here <laughs> and i remember so clearly waking up that next morning and saying to mo yo i don't want to be this person because mm. i'm gonna die like this mm. like this is not who i am mm-hmm. i don't care about this thing like and and since that day i told myself like i need to find myself a woman mm. that i'm gonna love and that i'm gonna stay focused and she's gonna help me to stay focused yeah and uh, and a couple of months later i found my wife and i just kept it really low key because i didn't want people uh, having opinions over yeah. my relationship. And you're private. Bro, like, yeah. I, I, the other day I saw a dude posting a, a, a picture about his kid and saying, like, how cute is she? And people are, like, saying, no, she's not cute. I'm like, dude, I would kill somebody. Like, I, like yes, it's really hard, this whole opinion thing, bro. Yeah. So, I've, I've never posted my son, bro. Never, ever, ever, yeah. ever. He was so good I tried, himself. I, 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 the, the last two years, I took a decision to post more about my wife and I, yeah. and everybody's been congratulating me in the last two years for, for being married or whatever. I've been married for a while. Um, but I knew I did that for a very specific reason. I, I did that because I really feel like in, in, in our world, we need more role models for, for the youth to look up to, yeah. to find uh, pictures of a really good man, a, a somebody that really loves his wife, somebody that's not ashamed to do it, somebody that's got nothing to hide. I'm not afraid if I'm going to make it onto any list of whatever. I know who I am, dude. Like, so that's why I post this stuff because I have confidence in it. Yeah. Um, and I, all I want to try and be is somebody that my kids can look to. Yeah. And I know that I've got this position of influence. And if you're following me, I hope that I can, I can sharpen you in a better way. I can make you a better human being by, and vice versa. Yeah. That's why I do it more. Yeah, no, I got you, man. Yeah, I like that. Uh, have you always been into black women? It doesn't matter for you. I've never, I've never, I, f- I felt that I was attracted to a specific color of woman. Yeah. It's a weird thing. I, mm. um, I, 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 I've dated across the board. Snow bunnies. Before, I, I, before I was with my wife, I was with, I was with a, a white girl from Bloemfontein. Mm. You know, like so, it was different. I, I never. I, it's weird. Yeah. It's, it's weird. <laughs> like I'll tell you that much. I one day want to write a book about being in a in a multicultural. <laughs> relationship because i think it's it's phenomenal i remember like the the one big difference was like 
Coco would always want to be under hot blankets with the with the heater on and the, the like the the heated blanket on. I'm like, yo, man, I can't sit next to you. I want the aircon. And so there's a lot of like funny, like random. If you've been with a celebrity, bro. No, no, I've never. You've never. No, I've never. Yo. Um, and I will never, obviously. Yeah, uh, but but yeah. You're not into celebs, no. I just think that like it's not even like the thing, man. Like I think I've bun- I've bumped into a lot of um, women that are celebrities that I think I could vibe with. Yeah, I have a lot of great conversations with a lot of different women that are celebrities. Yeah, um, I've never gone to the point of thinking like, yo, I want to be with them. But um, it's not a thing. I never I never chased anything. So when you say like, do I want black honeys or did I want celebrity things? I, I never thought of it, bro. I I ended up falling in love with the woman oh, that God. I'm with now. Dude, I heard a funny rumor that you hit um, Lebu Lukworm with a brick, like he was your friend. It's not altogether a lie. Okay. It's not altogether true either. Yeah. Um, so when I moved to Joburg, I, I have a friend. His name is Oz. Okay. Uh, I went to school with him. Uh, so when I arrived here, I said to him, yo, man, I, I really want to get to know people. Like, can you hook me up with like, your circle? You know. So yeah. I, I went out for, 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 for dinner with, with him and his friends. Yeah. And I met, I met Lebu. Yeah. I met... Uh, I met V the Val, mm. uh, Velapi. I met, and then I met Coco. Mm. She was there, um, and I met all her friends yeah. at that time. Um, not once that I even have an attraction to Coco. Then yeah. it was not a thing. Yeah. Um, Lebo and I we started to to hang out with with Velapi and Oz. Okay, um, and we were making music, and I had the studio, so they would come by, yeah. um, and then they they broke up. And life went on. Yeah. Um, and then for some odd reason, I don't understand how or why, I still can't recall the moment where my wife and I started talking. Okay. But it, it was a very innocent approach. It was a, it was a thing. And then when we started low-key seeing one another, yeah. I felt really bad. Mm. I felt really bad. Why? Because I had some serious feelings for this woman now. Mm. Um, feelings that were abnormal, that, that felt... You can't control. It, it, and, it's, and I know it sounds really cliche, but like I've, I've, I've dated a lot of girls and I've always, since a young age, I've always desired to be married. I've always mm. wanted to be a father and a husband because of the way that I grew up. But, yeah. um, and I never had this feeling, but now it was weird because I knew the guy that she'd been with before. Oh. Uh, and, and I needed to, uh, needed to address that. Mm. And, and I called uh, Coco over to my house and I was going to break up with her. Okay. Um, and then we, I, I couldn't get to that. It's a, I, I, for, me, for me, what it feels like, and I say this with a lot of confidence because I've been married to my wife now for nearly 10 years and things are good. We, yeah, yeah. We, I know that she's my soulmate. Yeah. I know that this was meant to be. Yeah, yeah. We had a chat, Lebo and I. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, so we so got when together. you met her, she was dating Lebo or they'd just broken up? No, when I met her, they were dating. Okay. Then, but I, I wasn't so close with them that I knew all their personal affairs. Gotcha. Then they broke up mm. and then time went on. Months went on. Oh, okay. Um, and then we started chatting, yeah. and that, and 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 for me, Lebo did my first photo shoot. Yeah. Um. I, when when I was younger, when I started dating Coco, I had a lot more like pride towards the whole thing. Yeah. I was like, Nah, man, whatever. Like, I don't want to talk to this guy anymore. Yeah. And now, like, I'm old, dude. Like, <laughs> I'm 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 30, bro. Like, I don't have time for. I'm married with Coco. Like, yeah. It's not a joke, you know. We're not dating or anything. But uh, yeah, life life is. Life and you still tied with Lebo, ne? We don't talk. Okay. We don't talk. Uh, I, I just think just the nature of life and yeah. how things are. Um, but you I know, don't people have, grow up. I don't have issues with him. If I saw him, I'd greet him. Yeah. I'm not. Uh, a lot of people say that white guys are unpacking. Is that true, bro? I don't know. I mean, statistically, <laughs> when you look at things, maybe we have a slight disadvantage in that form. But uh, but you from Vendor Dog? My, I can't speak on you my You from Vendor Dog? You got a bazooka um, up in let's there. Let's just say that my wife is happy, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and she's black. So I mean. <laughs> I don't really know, but <laughs> oh man, dude, I love you so much, man. Oh, You're bro, so cool, you too, man. Thanks, um, man. Um, I want to ask you some funny questions, but mm. uh, before we get into that, we can't finish without chatting about all the drama that's been happening in the country. Yeah, uh, what's your stance as you know, a father about uh, gender based violence? You know, man, I've always been like, um, I've, I've always loved reggae music a lot, I specifically love Bob Marley a lot because of what he spoke about and it goes back to the whole michael jackson thing i think that um one of the things that really drew me towards uh, spirituality was that 
I really believe that, I would still believe that at the core of spirituality, regardless of whatever religion you believe in, whatever you want to call your God, I, I really believe that there's a God <coughs> and we all just call him different things. Um, it's love. Um, and, and, and that's what I've always wanted to, to put out there is, is just this, if we could just love one another a lot more in what we say and how we handle one another, the world would obviously be a better place, but the world isn't. The world is messed up at the moment. It's really going through a, a huge societal issue that I don't know what's going on. And for the last three, four days with everything that's been going on, I've really been impacted a lot by it. And I've been speechless mm. and, and also desperate to like want to make a difference, but I don't really know what to do. Yep. The best thing I can do, and in my opinion, is around my friends and my circle, yep. I can tell them. Yep. You know, like... One of the things that I heard the other day, which I imp which I implemented straight away, is I was with the boys and and so I heard somebody saying that we shouldn't be speaking about women the way that we speak yep. when we with the guys. Yep. And yep. And when I heard that, I was like, man, maybe I need to change. Yep. It. And we were talking, and they were like, yo, look at that, honey. And I'm like, yo, guys, dude, please, let's I'm just, in the same let's boat, bro. I'm in the same. Um, my woman has me all the yeah, time because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, stop. But it's a weird thing. The other day I posted my father-in-law. And the women are like all going on about my father and all. I'm like, yo, you're doing the same thing. Oh, yeah. You, 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 you're doing the same damn thing. So I, 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 it breaks my heart around things. And I'm trying to do whatever I can with, with things. I wrote a song that I haven't put out yet um, titled We Nen, the, mm. the name of the girl. But it's really about everything that's going on. Um, I can play it for you, actually. And you can come and hear it in the studio okay, if you want. Awesome, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and I just think it's really sad. And I hope that I, I can teach my kid how to be a man mm. and I can teach my people around me how to be a man and how to and that's why I told you like I want to post more about these things the other day it really impacted me because a girl tweeted and she said yo everybody should really listen to uh, Mikasa's Your Body and it's a song and I was like wow amidst all of this you went and found comfort in a song that is my favorite song that I've ever written for mm. Mikasa is a song called Your Body and the way that I wrote it is a respectful man looking at a woman but I, I, the, 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 the connotations that I make, and I, I don't know if that's the right word, but the word, the word wordplay play, yeah. that I use there, it's a thing of respect. You know, it's a girl's there and I treat her like a stop sign. Like I, I stop, I respect her, I look right, I look left. You know, it's mm. that thing of like abiding by the law, abiding by, by systems that are there to make sure. So long answer um, made short is that I, I really am 100% against any gender-based violence. Yeah. I'm against racism to a huge form, Completely. something that breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, a, I'm against everything that is non-love. And, and, and all I'll try and do for the rest of my life is to spread love wherever I can. Mm -hmm. The other day I did a gig in the, in the city, in the city, in, city, in the, the heart of the city, yeah. where they were doing the looting the day before. And we did our show and I felt horrible to perform because I don't know how to go there and smile and dance. Well, all of this is happening. And then I remembered the power of music, yeah. especially on the African continent. Mm -hmm. We've always used music to heal or to mourn. Uh, so we did this show and it gave everybody my everything. And afterwards I said, I don't mind if you guys, I, I hope you guys don't mind, but I, I, can we pray together? Wow. Just for that moment. There was a couple of thousand people there. And you know, it was for an real? impactful moment for, for us, I believe. And, and, because I, I believe that when we agree on something, it, it can be done, you know. Yeah. So, so these are the small things that I would like to do. I'm buying pepper sprays now for, for, for the girls at UJ. We're going to be dropping them off in the next couple of days. So small things that we can do. But I really, man, I really hope things can turn around. With all the looting, did you ever at once consider going back to Portugal? I have never in my life since being in South Africa thought of leaving. But... On the second day of everything happening, the first time I said to my wife, I'm like, what is our plan B? Hmm. Right? Mm. And, 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 and it's a hard discussion to have. I told her that I would only ever leave if there was an extreme thing of, because, and, they, and I, I had this conversation with her last night over some dinner. I was telling her, you know what? If we didn't have kids, I would be way more radical in my approach mm. i would want to be the world changer but now i've got my own cubs dude. Yeah, yeah like i'm thinking about them you become Iron selfish man. bro you <laughs> yeah. become selfish yeah. around that stuff yeah. so um I, I don't plan on going anywhere <laughs> i really feel like i'm part of the change and and we have to we have to really stand up now I'm glad you're going on more man. than anything. We now, still need more of those hits, man. Yeah, my favorite try. song that you've ever done is "Over the Rainbow." Oh, oh I love that song. Yeah, so it used to make me go crazy, wow, dude. Special song. 
It's a song that, and you know, like I wrote that to an EDM beat. Yeah. Uh, of Cosmic Gate. Yeah. And that, that went number one on five. And then the couple remixed it. And then it went number one on Metro. <laughs> it, was, it was like phenomenal. It's just like, I love that song. Uh, dude, we all know that you love food. Why do we hoi onion on the bry stand before we bry? To clean understand. the bry stand. Oh, is so it? So the acidity in the onion helps to, to remove the thing and it, it essentially sterilizes your grid. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's a black thing that I thought we just did. No, no, I also do it. <laughs> it's, a it's a thing. Let's not put any color to it. We all do it, I yeah. swear. How many restaurants you got now, yeah? I got one. You only I got, got one. one. I got one in Pretoria, yeah, yeah. Uh, called Sunday's Cooking by Jay. It's been there now for almost three years. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a whole other bizarre thing. I, I, I never wanted to, to be anything food. Yeah. It's weird. Uh, the other day, I got the fright of my life. I was doing a show with Fusi Mashasela, and we were performing on guitars together, and he, he got introduced as the iconic South African musician. <laughs> and Jay got introduced as the foodie that sings. <laughs> I was like, what? After all these the hits. The foodie that sings? <laughs> Come on. But the food thing is just blown out way out of proportion. I love cooking, man. Yeah. I, I love it. This, this is where I cook. I, yeah. I, I chill out, get ingredients and cook. I love it. And it seems like the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, you know? Because exactly. you've come full circle. <clears throat> my mom had a restaurant for 18 years. Yeah. My father did food and beverage. You got the life. gin thing, the which gin is thing. nice. Thanks, which bro. is nice. Thanks. Got me Genesis fucked up the other day, well. bro. <laughs> <laughs> It's doing super well so um, far. You're a chef, you're a singer, entrepreneur. You can only do one for the rest of your life. Which would it be? Music. Nah. Nah, without a doubt, man. Nah. I'm not a chef, by the way. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a guy that likes cooking. And you uh, just happen to... Yeah, uh, I've never professed to be a chef. Cool. Uh, out, of, out of respect for people that actually trained and did it for a living. I'm a dude that's blessed enough to have people that are interested in what I do. Yeah. It's bizarre, man. I posted a picture on Instagram of roast chicken and potatoes. That's where it started. Yeah. It was five, six years ago. Yeah. I mean, and now I have a restaurant, a cookbook, a show, a TV. It's crazy. I don't, I, dude, your life is crazy. So you can listen, literally go to your restaurant, perform with Mikasa, yeah. have food at your restaurant with yeah. your own gin. Exactly. <laughs> no, it's, it's wild, dude. It's wild. I feel... And you know what? Like, it's it's... It's something that needs to be said is that a lot of the kids look at me and they think that I have it all together. Mm. And I need to let you guys, everybody know that like, I'm not making as much money as you think I'm making. Mm. I'm investing a lot of money mm. in the hope that it will make me money. Mm. Uh, the restaurant is a, is a very interesting thing. It's been open for nearly three years and I don't think we've ever made enough money to brag about. Yeah. Uh, break we've even. lost money. We've yeah. broken even. We've made a bit of money. Same with the gin. The gin's been around for eight, eight months. I haven't, I haven't made a cent. Uh, every, every single cent that I get into it, I, I plow back into it in the hope that it will pop one day. So... But That's you're leaving a, a legacy for your kids, you know? Bro, you know what I'm doing more than that? I'm doing what I love. Yeah. And I'm doing what I feel is right in the moment. And I go for it. And that's why, it, if, if, even if it doesn't fail, I lost half a bar in a production company. Wow. I started a production company. Next thing I knew, I was half a bar down because I was carrying people's salaries off my performances. <laughs> and I don't view that as a failure. I view yeah. that as a learning point. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I've lost half a bar at a club as well. Just, yeah. I don't know what I was doing. Party or what? No, no, no. I bought a club. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, and then I don't know what I was doing, man. We were drinking the stock. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the biggest problem, man. Owners and their tabs, bro. Uh, last question. You've won the lotto, 200 million. What are you going to do with it? I'm definitely going to, um, to put most of it away for my kids, um, especially where I'm at now. I feel like I, I don't need a lot of money to make me happy. Matter of fact, I'm the guy that doesn't even know how much money he makes. Hmm. I don't. I don't. I, 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 all I know is that I just want to be able to pay my house, make sure that my wife and my kids get everything that they need and that I can spoil my mom. That's yeah. all. Like, I, 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 honest to God, I don't know how much money I make a month. I yeah. know that my, my, my financial director will call me and say like, yo, you need to be tight Boom. or yo, you can go and spoil yourself with something. Yeah. And that's how it works. Yeah. I, I'm blessed and fortunate enough to have two people in my life that I trust with my family, with yeah. everything I have. Yeah. And that's my, my, my FD, Rui, and my business partner, Sergio. Oh, I thought you were going to say um, Moti and Duda. Yeah, no, they, they, <laughs> they, they, they're part of it. But yeah, these are the people that literally look after my yeah. life. Now, I'm the same like you, dude. I know people that are obsessed with money. And I'm so like, like the dude, whole thing of like winning the lotto. I, I, I'll probably just try and do some good. Yeah, I'll probably yeah. try and put it away from my kids. Yeah. And I'll probably do something like lavish. Yeah. I'll probably go and buy myself like a new guitar or something yeah. like something old. 
I don't know, hook up a meeting with John May and pay him to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool, man. Jay something, bro, love you long time. Thank you so you much too, for bro. coming Thank through, you for man. having me. And, and I just, yeah, just once again, just shine some light on you, bro. Like, I know Thanks, that you've been man. through a lot and I know that it hasn't been easy and I know that a lot of people look at you and they judge you and they, yeah, yeah. they, they, they spoil you with hate. But I, I would be really proud of what you've done. I know you've made some mistakes and so... So yeah, it's life, man. No one's perfect. So yeah. that's, the, that's the reality. So thanks for having me on your show. Um, yeah, it's a real proud moment for me. Uh, what I love about you, man, is that like you literally do everything I want to do, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh, man. Hey, you stay in your own lane, tunnel vision. Sure. You know what I mean? And I appreciate that, thanks, you know. Uh, you, they say you can't have it all, but to me, it seems like you literally do. But, you know, as I in life, a... like you're saying, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. We always got to make room for growth. Yeah, and, yeah. And we all have a phenomenal thing inside of us. I think it just requires a lot of digging. All right. So we need to, this podcast to go viral, yes. which is why I think it's time for you to do that uh, uh, cover Should version. We do something. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go so get we can my go guitar. Viral. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get it real quick. All right, cool, bro. <laughs> I don't know how this thing came about. Yeah, tell us. Tell so, us. Um, so, so, uh, <laughs> so, it's really weird. Um, and, and I, and I, and I, yeah, it's weird. But I lost a bet to my wife. She said that I should shave my beard, like trim, it, trim my beard, because I was trying to grow my beard. And then she said, Nah, I don't want this beard anymore. I'm like, Nah, I want this beard. And then she's like, Well, put it on your social media. Let's see what everybody else thinks. And if you lose, you're gonna owe me something. Yeah. And then 97% of people said I should cut my beard. Like my wife said, wife is always right. And then, and then I thought she was going to ask for something, you know, like, nice, you yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and she said, no, pick up a guitar and, uh, and I want you to do a cover for me. Yeah. And I was like, that's weird. And she got her phone out. So she got a camera out. And then this is what I did. She told me the song. And then I went on the internet, got the lyrics and... Uh, <laughs> amazing bro thank you man <laughs> dude you just took me back to when the prophet told you that yeah. your calling is music bro Damn, man. Yeah, that was a crazy um that was a crazy moment in my life it's something that fuels me every day it's, i went to church for the very first time when i was 15 and i only went because it was at the girls school so i wanted to see all the girls <laughs> and then this prophet lady that didn't or well, she was a guest speaker out of nowhere she came and she said um, she introduced herself to a room of about a thousand people and I was sitting there with my school uniform and I was thinking like man I hope these church people don't do something crazy like call people up because that would be really bad I don't really want to go in front of all the girls go up on the stage <laughs> and I kid you not bro she started talking five minutes into her introducing herself she stopped and she pointed at me and she said I have a message for you from God. And I literally thought, this woman is crazy. <laughs> like, she's like a fortune teller. And she thinks she knows what God is saying. And, and she literally cut, cut a long story short, but she told me God wanted to use me 
uh, with music and wanted me to pick up the guitar. After her finding out that I that I played guitar when I was 11, and she said, yeah, God wants you to pick that up again, and he's going to use you in mighty ways in music. Uh, and when I look back at it now, I'm like, wow, this is this really is for the glory of God, and I hope that's how it remains forever. Maji. Maji. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. Podcast and chill. Maji, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. What is Ebon Sense? Ebon Sense is the largest online marketplace for service providers that offers services to customers, from housekeeping to simple carpentry. Or it could be that your car broke down and you want a mechanic. Or you could be the person who has the skill. Well, do not hold your back. Join Sense today. Join millions of other people that are using Sense to get things done. We are here to bridge the gap between a service provider and customer from the comfort of your fingertips. Join Sense today by simply going to www appensenseglobal.com or download the app both on Play Store for Android and App Store for your iOS to sign up today. Appensense, solution at your fingertips.